Hey everyone, Michael here. Today we're going to be going over Gmail loaders with LlamaHub using Langchain models to query your own emails. So before we start, I'm just going to go over what I'm using for this video. I am using LlamaHub loaders. You can find that at llamahub.ai. I'm using Llama Index. You can find this at Llama Index, jupyterindex.readthedocs.io, and I will be using the OpenAI model from the Langchain library. So I will put all of those in the description below. But let's get into it and go over a bit of how this all works. So first I want to talk about the Gmail loader. Um, again, if you're not familiar with the Llama Hub loaders, you can find them all here and they do have a ton, so I would recommend checking them out. But for the Gmail loader, the way this works is you will import download loader from Llama Index and you will download the loader of Gmail Reader. And just to give a little bit of insight into what it's doing, this is the Gmail Reader class. So as you can see, when it loads data, it is doing a lot of stuff under the hood to retrieve your emails using Google Cloud and Google API clients. So to get into this, I will now go over a bit of the code. <clears throat> Here we have our main file. And again, I'm also using Streamlit just for a simple GUI to demonstrate how this all works. Um, and I'm also going to explain a little bit why I have these buttons here instead of having them just type in queries in the original uh, attempt, I try to just have it be like type in a query, but I believe that it is important to restrict the inputs as much as possible for the users when you're dealing with large language models so you can get them the information you know they want and can define a lot of the parameters and the queries for them. So for example, this button, recent emails, you will find right here. When you click that, it is going to query the, call the query email function and then we're going to get documents, get prompt, and get the index. So let's go into the get prompt, get documents function. The get documents function is using the Gmail reader, and it is loading ten documents. And what is the email query, query we are using? Well, I have a constant uh, dictionary, and I'm accessing the recent emails query, and this is the query for the gmail api to use and the way i got i got to this conclusion was by basically going to my email and typing in like when you type in stuff like this like in inbox and it filters out everything just for the inbox i use chat gpt to basically generate a different like a very more complex uh filter uh one that just did not pick up on anything with like no reply, notification, subscribe, do not reply, anything that could just be spam or just like updates and you just want emails from actual senders. Um, so if you're interested in like playing around with that, I would check that out as well. Uh, so after we get the documents, we are then calling get, in, get prompt. Get prompt is up here. And for this, we are using a question and answer prompt from the Llama Index library. And this is the prompt. So I'm saying you're an email assistant. You should be asking about emails and the context, which is provided below, context string. And then we have given the information. Yeah, please answer the question. That'll be the query string. And so like question and answer prompts and prompt templates uh, from the libraries like Langchain and Llama Index are basically just ways to make your life easier and make things more uh, plug and play instead of trying to do this all custom. So I would recommend getting familiar with the prompt templates as much as possible when you're doing things like this. The next function we are calling is get index and it takes one parameter. This is the documents, the documents that we get from the get documents function. And the get documents, if you haven't seen the other videos, like a document is just a standardized way of formatting data. So it's usually like a tuple of text and extra info. So any information, any data that your reader or loader pulls is going to be putting it into one of those two things. So text or um, extra info. If it's a document in Langchain, I believe the 
the two things are going to be um, page content and metadata. So uh, depending on which uh, library you use, um, just kind of be aware that the documents, that the document type is somewhat different uh, in terms of the actual key value pairs in the tuples. Um, but anyways, getting into the get index function, we have, let's go over this first, the prompt helper. <laughs> the prompt helper is, if we go to GBG index this thing, it says this helper can split text, it can also concatenate text from node structs, but keeping token limitations in mind. So TLDR, this basically just abstracts away a lot of the workload that you'd have to do for ensuring that you're not exceeding token limits when you're making open AI calls and you can determine what types of chunks sizes you want uh, when you're splitting the text and a lot of this is just done under the hood. Uh, the next thing we're doing is we're getting an LLM predictor. So LLM predictor is a class from LAM index again and we are using a Langchain open AI model uh, to instantiate the LLM. For this I'm using text DaVinci 003. I would recommend using text ADA 001 when you're first starting out just because this is going to be making all the embeddings and um, you just really don't want to be spending as many tokens as you need to and spending as much money as you need to and this is the cheapest model. It'll just be less quality than the DaVinci 3 but uh, you can always change it afterwards. After that uh, just for demonstration purposes I'm using the GPT simple vector index so this is just going to be a huge JSON object um, that is local to your device. Uh, this is courtesy of LAM index. If you want to connect to other indices, it does show you how to do that in the documentation with different types of vector stores you can connect to. Uh, I believe they have like Chroma, they have Pinecone, they have, uh, yeah, right here, they have Quadrant, they have FA, they have Fice. I don't know how to say that. Um, and a couple others. But for this, I'm just using the GPT simple vector index. Now, right here, what I'm doing is, and you'll, you'll understand why in a minute, I am first going to check if I have an index.json file. And if I don't, then I'm going to set index equal to none. And the reason I do that is so if there is no index.json file, if this is like the initial load of your vector index, then we can say if index is none we can instantiate a GPT simple vector index, put all the documents that we that we pass into the function, the LLM predictor and the prompt helper, and then we save it to disk. So there will be a file here that is called index.json. Then we're gonna return the index, and then we are going to run index.query. And this takes two parameters for my purposes. It's going to take the actual query, which is here, is uh, recent emails, or like, what are my recent emails? That is the query. <laughs> or find me recent emails. And the next thing that it's going to take is the prompt, the text Q&A prompt. And so under the hood, this will be taking in the input variables that we have and dynamically putting them into the prompt template before it runs the entire thing. So the, the prompt templates, again, are just to kind of set some context for the large language model and provide the extra information uh, like the documents so it has access to those and it can search those and respond with that information in mind. Now, the next thing I forgot to mention you will need is you will need credentials from Google Cloud uh, to access your Gmail. So if you're not familiar with how to get that, uh, if I can just like, if I can go to Google, if I can go to cloud.google.com, you will need to go to the console and you will want to make a new project. Uh, so like I like Jim AI, but for this project, you'll want to then go to enable APIs and services. And then you, you can go to add enable APIs and you will want to look for the Gmail API. And you'll want to initialize this. And then once you do this, you can get your OAuth credentials and get your credentials.json file uh, like I have here. And you should call it this because this is what the Gmail reader looks for under the hood at the moment. 
I do plan to probably modify the current reader to my liking and add some extra things like some extra functions and some extra logic um, because I'm a little disappointed in the functionality of it at the moment. I wish it could do more, but it only gets the last 10 emails and I haven't really seen a way to set a new default um, easily. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Someone can let me know in the comments. But anyways, uh, let's just kind of show you how this works when we actually run it. So streamlet run email chat.py. When I come here, And now we're gonna hit recent emails to get the recent emails we have. And so it takes you to the Google Auth screen. I'm gonna be using Merkle because this is a test account. Um, and there we go. So now we've authenticated the emails and it will continue its process of saving the index to disk. So now we have our token. This token is the access token we have to uh, get emails from my Merkle Gmail account. And so it's gonna keep running here and we're just gonna see what it gives us. So there we go, based on the information provided, it appears the user has received an email from Michael on March. So that's a bit wrong. Um, I will have to try to figure out why that is, but uh, it is saying the email contains a snippet that reads, hey Michael, let's try going over this sort of email where it takes us for starters. Can you send me the targeting you have in mind so I can send, so I can have our data team run a query and check how many. If you're searching, looking for recent emails, you can search emails sent after March 2023. You can also search emails sent by Michael or emails that contain the phrase targeting you have in mind. So let's check. Hey, Michael, let's go over email and see where it takes us. And this was sent 47 minutes ago. So that is right. And I am pretty happy about this. Um, again, this is not as, you know, robust as I'd like it to be at the moment. But I am exploring this loader because I have some some needs for it for a, for something I'm working on. Um, and yeah, so that is essentially how you would use the Gmail loader. Um, I think this is a super powerful loader in my mind because it's, you know, if you want to just search when this gets better, Hey, like what, what did so-and-so say, um, yesterday? And if it could, you know, accurately pull that, I think that would be phenomenal. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what I could do to improve this, also give me suggestions. Uh, hit me up, hit me up in the comments. Give me up on Twitter. Um, and yeah, that is the video for now. Uh, thank you again. There's no set outro for this. So uh, goodbye.